people in the small town of Midge Agoria believe they are being watched over by a divine influence. Many believe that the Virgin Mary has been appearing to some young visionaries every day since the summer of 1981 and is giving them messages for the world. The visionaries tell us the call to conversion is urgent. Fragile peace in Yugoslavia is more fragile than ever. If a person is courageous enough to come to this place and to begin a pilgrimage, that is when God creates us again and again, and we become new human beings. Last October 21st, I woke up in the hospital. I was told by the, the doctors that, you know, if I wouldn't have made it there, I would have passed away. And that was probably the worst day of my life, one of the darkest times of my addiction. I've never felt fear like that, um, powerlessness. I'm in desperate need of something to help save my faith. I feel like Magigoria is the place I need to go to restore it. Restore it, yeah. I don't believe in God and miracles, um, heaven or hell, but I guess I, I feel that I've, I've, I've seen enough hell in my lifetime. I, I believe that hell is here on earth, and I would like to know if there's heaven. In 2015, people from around the world entered a video contest for a chance to win a trip to Medjugorje. Hi, my name is Alex Bickham. I'm entering for a chance to win a trip to Cross Mountain at Medjugorje during Youth Fest. I have dreamed of going to Medjugorje for as long as I can remember. I know so many people who have gone. I can't reject her calling any longer. I'm very skeptic of miracles and apparitions, things like that. I think God kind of left this. Sometimes I do doubt his existence because of the hard times that I'm going through. It would be an opportunity for me to finally get the answers that I'm looking for. I just really need this trip for me. It's 13 minutes until the deadline. I thank you for watching my video submission. I hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Eight were chosen and allowed us to document their spiritual journey to one of the fastest growing pilgrimage sites in the world. It was my first flight ever. ever for her. And I cried. Where are we? <laughs> my name is Ellie Rich. I'm 20 years old and I'm studying psychology and theology. One of the things I was nervous for was like meeting mm -hmm. everyone. I'm an African from Uganda. He's so cool. Like he, he can gave... speak like five languages or yeah. something. I'm not looking for miracles. That's the first thing. Miracles have, been, have happened in my life right from my past. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to so many friends who have accompanied me from when I began, when I entered in the seminary up to now. Hi everyone, my name is Madison. I'm 17. We've been best friends since seventh grade, six years now. We're seniors this year, graduating soon. Hi, my name is Alex Venegas. I am currently a student at Berkeley College of Music. I've grown up Catholic, but it's really been in the past couple years that I've come to see how much of a gift that faith really is. Going to Medjugorje for me is getting to know Harry more so that I can get to know her son more. I am a complete skeptic. I have absolutely no faith. We moved around a lot when I was little, and I don't know, we just really didn't have time to like join a church. I was kind of left to make my own decisions about like what I believe in. I've been battling a drug addiction for the past few years. This past October 21st, I almost died. I came very close to dying from a drug overdose. Um, but I believe that it was God that, that saved me. I believe he has a bigger plan for me. And I would like to go to Medjugorje and see the miracle for myself. I wanted to come just because I wanted to see like what's out there, like what could be going on here. Medjugorje means between two hills. Nearly 50 years before the apparitions, locals carried cement up their tallest hill and built 
a 26-foot cross as a clear sign of their faith in Jesus Christ. On the other hill marks the site of the first apparition. Did you see the spot of the first apparition? Almost a century before the apparitions began, the church in Medjugorje was dedicated to St. James, the patron of pilgrims. No one could have imagined that millions of pilgrims would flock to this small village that had been virtually unknown to the world. We all got along so well. Like oh we, God, we we sat there and talked like right away. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. We were talking about how I don't even know how to pray the rosary. Ellie came down to our door and she gave me this, and she's like, just in case you know you want to. <laughs> it was so it. sweet. It was so sweet. I was like. One of the best parts about the faith for me is sharing it with others. I know that Mary's been with me every step of the way. And I'm hitting stuff and I hear bugs. And I just don't know where my phone is. My parents didn't understand why I want to come here. Here in Medjugorje, nobody wanted to come before because here was uh, people who was work hard to grape, to tobaccos. But I think Blessed Mary, she was preparing me to be here to understand more. I was so happy here. In the summer of 1981, six children saw a mysteriously beautiful woman on a hill. She came to tell the world that God exists. When the apparitions began, Yalka was 10 years old, Ivanka was 15 years old, Mariana, Bitska, Maria, and Ivan were all 16 years old. Each were entrusted with prophetic secrets and messages of hope for the world. People from all over the world come to experience this supernatural event that continues to this day. <laughs> I think he's lying. That's really good. On this trip, I hope to better my relationship with God. I've had to step in as a mother figure to my younger siblings, and it gets really hard sometimes. I heard about Medjugorje from my godmother, Kathy. She came back with the rosary. She got blessed for me, and I keep it with me all the time. It gives me hope and strength to beat this addiction. I couldn't have dreamt that I'd be part of anything like this. Every August since 1989, up to 50,000 young people gather in Medjugorje for a week-long youth festival. They come from all parts of the world. Dragi mladi, dobrodošli u Medjugorje. It seems like a giant family here. We're all from different parts of the world, but we're all here for the same reason, you know, our faith in God. Ove godine je geslo, Mladi Festa 26, Mladi Festa, mir vama. Gospodinov mir uđe u naše srca. Youth Festival, it's beautiful. This is what Blessed Mary want. She never said, my dear Croatia. Always, my dear children, all together. When Our Lady appeared, she said, my dear children, do not be afraid. I am God's mother, the Queen of Peace. Every message, starts with same words and those words are dear children and many people wonder you know how is it possible that someone doesn't get tired of repeating the same words dear children thank you for having responded to my call for 34 years the visionary Ivan gave a beautiful answer to that question he said our lady keeps on repeating remember your mom your dad repeating the same words how many times she said, come on. On the way to the airport, my mom kept reminding me of like all these things I had to do. She was like, and I go, yeah. I can't wait to be free from you. I said that and she got really upset and like started crying. Our lady does the same because we keep on forgetting. She's mother. Our role as parents is to repeat sometimes. You hear things here that you need to hear. I know Mary, but like I've never thought of her really like as my mom. Miriana has been receiving apparitions on every second of the month. Tomorrow is 2nd of August. So that is why we'll be together with Miriana, God willingly, at the Blue Cross. These second of the month apparitions 
are also kind of a prayer for the conversion of unbelievers. Although Our Lady never uses the term unbelievers, she says those who have not come to know the love of God yet. Well, the waiting was an interesting experience. It was fighting, being tired. I didn't end up sleeping at all, but uh, the bonding experience was more than anything. Like, I'm already family with all the friends here. Camping was just the biggest adventure. It was fun getting to bond with them and like just hang out with them, sing, play cards, um, pray the rosary. We got to teach a couple people how to pray the rosary. I've never said it so many rosaries in one night like that. There's no such thing as personal space when you're up on that hill. There were so many people, so many people. The rocks were all filled. I was really excited to see the apparition, so that's kind of what kept us going. I had, you know, slept for a couple days. I needed space. I, I couldn't sleep, and I left because I just, I don't know, wasn't feeling it. There was like a sense of peace, but everyone was kind of rushing towards it. It was starting to get hectic with the crowd. Like it was, it was kind of crazy. I literally had to like trip over people to get out of there and I had to trip on people to get back up there, but I don't know, like, people care about that, so. I didn't want to be a party pooper. Everyone was basically holding their breath, waiting for this message, knowing that the mother was there. I just had this feeling like I had to cry it out. I didn't, um, I just didn't think it was going to be that powerful until I saw it in person. I don't know, it was just amazing to think of like, about what she could be seeing. After 36 years, the apparition, many pilgrims think that uh, for me it's normal, it's something what I use to do. Uh, I always tell that it's not normal. For me, always, it's like first time. It was 24 of June, 81. When I was coming in Medjugorje, I always was with her. Ivanka. And we was walking uh, down what we're calling now, Parisian Hill. And uh, she tell me, I think that Blessed Mary is on the hill. For me, really, this is not possible, because I never heard about Lourdes, about Fatima. I never heard that Blessed Mary can appear. I said to her, Maybe I did uh, in a little rude way. I say, yes, uh, Blessed Mary, she don't have anything another to do, and she comes to two of us. I leave her, but I feel in me so strong feeling. I never feel this, uh, something really strange. And I, I need to return. Nothing will stop me. And when I return, she said to me, look at now, please. And I saw on the hill a woman with a long dress uh, taking like this baby in the hands. Everything was really strange because nobody walk on the hill, no pass. There's a sense of peace that was coming through the crowd as they were all like very hushed and like wait, waiting for her very patiently to get the message. And then all of a sudden that came crashing down. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
possibly demonically possessed person that was literally, I think, 10 feet away from me. You know, I saw her thrashing around. Five guys were trying to bring her down, and she had an amazing amount of force. It was very strange. I felt surrounded. Possession, evil spirits, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's true or what's not, you know. But it honestly freaked me out because it was right behind me, and I've never seen anything like that in person. I frequently meet the devil. Frequently. Well, I've been doing exorcism for a long time. When Our Lady appears, the crowd of thousands goes quiet. But there are times the silence is broken by agonizing screams. In some of those cases, priests have determined that those screaming are possessed. It's right in Genesis. You tricked the woman. Now the woman will crush you. Her presence stirs them so that they can't hide. They have an aversion to things that are holy. They have superhuman strength. They have a knowledge beyond what human beings can have. You ever feel fear when you're... No. Oh, he's afraid of me. <laughs> Somebody that's weak in myself, I can hardly move. He's, he's frightened of me. It freaks me out, but I just remembered we were, we were there for, you know, God and Virgin Mary and that it was going to be okay, so. It was like felt all like all the blood was rushing out of my body. Like it was so crazy. I was just like. When she looking you, you have everything. I think that people in the heaven feel like this, and you can imagine how I feel when she leave me. I don't have any pain big like this that I can say like this. I feel. It was honestly pure joy on her face, and and I could cry like thinking about it right now because. Um, like, I've never seen someone look that happy. And that, like, she was honestly, like, and she was in a different place, obviously, but, like, it was just beautiful to me. And I don't know, like, I really didn't think I'd feel like that. To know that she's there, and you always, like, tell yourself she's here, she's listening. Um, but the fact that she would come and show us that she is here, and she is listening, and she does love us. I don't know, the whole thing just made me feel uncomfortable. I, I don't think it's very genuine at all. It seems like a hoax to me. From the beginning, the children faced rigorous interrogations by police and examinations by physicians, psychiatrists, scientists, and priests. The visionaries underwent extensive neurological and physical testing. Maria is now entering the ecstatic state. Their eyes reacted as if they were looking at a powerful light. Ivan's heartbeat increased by 30% at the moment he went into ecstasy. The children were submitted to new medical and psychological tests. All these tests enabled us to conclude that the visionaries could by no means reach that state through their own strength. They were found to be healthy and sane. The results also suggested that the children could not be deliberately lying. They are not dreamers or delirious. The visionaries are faced with an entity which we cannot define. I'm the person who never wants to go to medical. And I always was ready to do everything what they want. We was have a psychiatrists, psychologists, heart, brave, everything, everything. And I said that uh, we are normal children. How likely is it that they could maintain a, a fabrication over 34 years? They have never wavered in their belief that they are being visited by the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the beginning, they wanted that I say that Medjugorje is a story, that uh, priest, Franciscan priest working against Yugoslavia, against state, that uh, Father Yozo do everything.
When the apparitions began, Father Yuzu was the parish priest of Medjugorje. Pilgrims often travel to the small island of Badia to meet Franciscan priest Father Yuzu Zovko. Attract me to yourself, almighty Jesus. May your love free my hatred. May your humility destroy my arrogance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Upon hearing about the apparitions, Father Yozo was skeptical and greatly conflicted. Uh, the events that began that summer dramatically changed the children's lives. The village was under the strict rule of communism, and the six children were enemies of the state. Bila molitva zahvale vitiskove i istiskove, ali Bog je uslišao, to znam. Tada sam čuo glas koji mi je kazao, idi i zaštiti djecu. Father Jozo went to the door of the church to find the children pleading with him to hide them. Father Yozo soon became the young visionary's defender. We was praying every evening rosary in the church, and uh, Father Yozo was in the altar. We was behind of him, six of us. And one day, and during the prayer, we saw in the choir, Blessed Mary, with hands like this, and uh, we didn't say anything. The Father Yozo, we saw that he saw, because he's starting to pray on different way. Uh, he's starting to pray, hello Mary. Uh, really like, uh, like that he want to go in the heaven, how, was, how he was praying. And all people in the church uh, immediately saw that something happening, because why he praying on this way? and we understand that he saw. In August 1981, Father Yozo was preaching in the church about Moses and 40 years spent in the desert. Communist officials interpreted this as a denunciation of 40 years of socialism. Father Yozo was soon taken into custody and sentenced to three years in prison. I want that you never know how it is to live in communism. If you're talking about Holy Mass, about prayer, you are enemy of the Yugoslavia. God in Yugoslavia don't exist. Never wavering in his priestly vocation, he continued living and preaching Our Lady's messages of prayer, fasting, reading the Bible, confession, and receiving the Eucharist. Medjugorje is heaven visiting earth in a sensible way, something you can touch and feel. You have to walk and stumble over stones and climb hills and get out there and do things. And so I think that's God saying, look, your faith has to be alive. It has to make you move. She walking here. She is still here. This is different from the Lord of Fatima because we can smell her here. We can feel her here. She's with us here. When I see young people who come from there, they're just so transformed. Yeah, they met their mother there. Okay, guys. You know what our young people do? When they want to pray for their future spouses or when they want to pray for happiness in life, they take their shoes off. So which one? This is the spot where you see this wooden cross where 
Our Lady appeared to Maria and Our Lady's eyes were filled with tears. This is the place where Our Lady gave her first message. Peace, 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 and only peace. Peace should reign between God and man and among people. So let us pray for the gift of peace in our own heart. Nikki was giving reflections and talking about praying for our families and thinking about the family of mine that's been here climbing up this hill praying for me too. Multiple times since I've been on the trip I prayed for my mother. She has uh, cerebral palsy um, and some mental illnesses and she's just not you know in the best health. Vitska says now ladies she was holding rosary in her hands and she said this is your weapon. Beauty about this weapon is that it will not harm anyone. It can only bring benefit and good thing to persons that you pray for. The Lord is calling us all to journey towards Him. We have been in prayer, removing shoes. I've never had an experience like this, climbing at the top of the hill like this, rocky like this one. But for sure, for me, it's another miracle. I stepped on some sharp rocks and it hurt really bad. And I didn't want to keep going. But then I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do this because I'm going to feel good when I get to the top. To climb up that hill, which is pretty hard. It kind of hurt barefoot. But to do that and then kneel at the cross um, just made it so real. I felt really empowered, I guess, because if you're willing to change, like you have to suffer. I believe you can see the statue over there. That's the place of the first apparition. According to the visionaries, Our Lady said, when these apparitions are over, on this spot I believe a visible permanent sign. You feel like you're entering the Holy of the Holies because arriving here, people are all silent, they're deep in prayer. I did a lot more soul searching when, when I came up here today. During the apparitions, I was very confused and uh, I felt crowded and cramped. I was unable to pay attention, you know what I mean? But when I came up here today, it just, I don't know, it was different. It's a place that'll make you feel more at peace and forgive people. I don't know, there's just something about this place. Everyone says like you feel peace in Magicoria, and I really do. This is just all I've been focused on. It's absolutely beautiful and it's peaceful. I feel her here. I feel her wanting to be here to look over this place and to look over the village. That's how I always see all the apparitions. It's always on some sort of hill. The Virgen de Guadalupe was the exact same way, like top of a hill where she could see the entire city. She's always looking after us and always kind of looking from the highest spot and just looking down on the village and wanting to make sure that everyone's okay and everyone's taken care of like a real mother would. Over the centuries, God has sent Mary, the mother of Jesus, to appear in visible form, offering messages for the world. She comes at particular times in history to guide us and call us to love. When she came to Fatima, she came to little children. And when she came to Michigoria, she came to those young people. Oh, she loves them because they, they haven't gotten into this cranky period yet. <laughs> or this, I, I can do it myself. Here in Medjugorje, we call the Virgin Mary Gospa. Mary is the queen of heaven. She's our lady. And she's Jesus's mother. Oh, I love her. Her eyes is blue, she has a white cape on her head. She has like a white cloak right here, and blue she's wearing. The last thing I think Mary has is strong feet. You can kill a snake with his feet, like. We don't really know if we, how she really looks like. She could look really different, and she could look more beautiful. But I really do think she's a very, very important woman. To so pray a lot, and then you feel Mary. Blessed Mary want that we have love. We have now everything, but we don't have love. We don't have peace. It's important message, reason why she is here. 
It is such a joy to be here in Medjugorje. I grew up in Rwanda, actually in a place where Our Lady appeared to, a place called Kibeho. She told the visionaries, tell my children all over the world, love one another, forgive one another. In November 1981, a young schoolgirl heard a voice call out to her and suddenly found herself before a woman of indescribable beauty. She called herself the mother of the word. She came with grave warnings and to call all her children to prayer and conversion. She tried to protect us from the genocide. The leaders were giving people permission to go out and kill everybody of my tribe. I was a student in a college. My parents asked me to go to hide. I remember when I was leaving, my father gave me a rosary. I went to the neighbor. He showed me a tiny bathroom. He went back and brought five more women. We ended up staying in the bathroom three months. I had so much anger. I would think of what is going on for us, our tribe, and I would say I would avenge my family. The only thing I had was the rosary my dad gave me with the clothes I have worn for the past three months. From the time I wake up, I could grab the rosary quick before the devil comes in my heart. It was like moving from hell to a place of air. I can feel peace. And I will say the words, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then I'm like, I'm praying and I'm having bad thoughts. And then I'm, I will kill them. I will be a soldier. The whole other tribe, I wanted them to go to hell. Something inside said, pray with your whole heart. Mean every word you say. When I started to pray for them and believing there is a chance we can change, I could not hate them anymore. As long as there is love of God within the heart, we are all brothers and sisters. I felt so much peace, and yet the situation in the country was getting worse. I was listening very closely. I think it was maybe the first time I was, you know, in a church setting where I was, I was wishing people would be quiet so I could hear better, you know what I mean? We are in a battlefield here on earth. Something inside said, when you choose anger, when you choose hatred, things like a genocide happen. But if you choose to love, remember I am with you. I, I have a lot of problems with myself, but you know, I've never, never gone through anything like that. She had a really powerful story. People who are on the side of love are the people who have suffered. No matter how much they have suffered, they stand up for love. Your story really touched me. I was sitting and I was listening to it and there were like a couple of people behind me that were talking and I just got up and <laughs> I needed to hear what she had to say. It was like, like you were talking and saying like, what was it like? The child of a snake is still a snake and the child of a cockroach is still a cockroach. It's like I've never experienced, you know, any, any like hatred like that in my life. So mm -hmm. it was like I, I just wanted to hear how, you know, you grew from it. I went back to my village and I met somebody who killed my parents. I reached out to him and I told him I forgave him. If you believe, you, be, you don't believe God halfway. I just said our father, which if I'm meaning this, He's a father for everybody. Mm -hmm. Wow, including the bad guys. Including the ones who are killing me. You no, know, you're you're either, you know, with him or against him, you know, mm -hmm. as far as God. And so I've, you know, really been trying to get back on that side of mm -hmm. being spiritual and praying, you know. You are very blessed to have the Blessed Mother visiting today. We can listen today. Remember there is always hope with God. Hi guys, uh, who does not want to go to confession? Why don't you want to? You have to say everything you've done wrong, and it's like, I don't know, it's kind of embarrassing. I think it's better to start to talk about it, but I get scared. Everybody gets scared. I get scared. Well, I've never, ever, ever done that before. Confession? It's hard for me to connect to it because I don't understand any of it. I felt so much better. I felt like all this weight came off of my, my soul. I think we do have a soul, like, I don't want to just think that I'm, like, a rack of bones, you know, like, I just, but I also then, I say that, and then I think, like, well, we science, are. like, we're just, yeah. we're just sophisticated animals. That's, like, how my mind works. 
I see a therapist and a psychiatrist. And one thing that I always thought was remarkable about Catholicism was just confession, and I haven't done that in years. So what do I have to lose, really? What do I have to lose? Nothing. To me, all that stuff that I've been through in the past, it, it just opened my eyes at what I was doing. And, you know, I thank God right away because this just made my relationship with God stronger. Pain is part of the package of life. Pain can be transformed. I just kind of spilled it, you know what I mean? I've been obsessed with just, you know, getting high and having sex. And I just told them, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with my faith in God. I feel like it set me, you know, maybe on the right track, you know, and it changed my frame of mind, mind a little bit. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. That's the God you meet in confession. He bends down and washes our feet. No one has the power to forgive sin except God. And he was sharing that power with us. He shared it with his apostles and the priests. I have the power over that. I can forgive sin. Isn't that amazing? That's incredible participating in God's, in God's work, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm a channel of something incredible. And then seeing what God's work does in the soul of the person is just unbelievable. You really truly feel like, you know, your sins are forgiven and God does love you, especially after I had that confession. I got really emotional because uh, I just let everything go I felt guilty about and he said you're free from sin. It's so powerful confession. I've been at an exorcism where the devil will shout out the sins of the people that are there. He knows their sins. But if you've been to confession, he doesn't know. It's a blank. It's always hard for me to like actually say what I'm feeling, but um, hold on, are you going inside? Oh, hey, see, this is good. Uh, I'm proud. I just wish that like, I wish that I could have opened up to him more. He told me about this car accident he was in and he should have died. He was like, I saw heaven and it is beautiful. And like, I testify that to you. Like, I'm telling you it's real. And I was like, well, that's incredible. But like, I don't, I don't know. It's hey, just... say it. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything if you don't believe it, so. Yeah. You didn't open up to him, so now you don't know what you could have got from it. But I love you because you can talk to me. There are two profound sins in the world today, self-reliance and self-hatred. So many people in our society are brought up to think that they can do it without any help from anybody. They're self-reliant. And then when you try and you try and you try and you fail, that's when you hate yourself. What a way to destroy a life. To, to have you think that you don't need anyone, even God. You gotta hang in there with your pain and your sin and your falling and your failings and your humiliations and start to hang on to God. And that's when you start to see a change. All of us have cross. If you don't have today, you will have tomorrow. With the prayer, I learning how to bring this cross. I seeing all these things in the sick people, and no one asked me why I am sick, uh, what happening to me. Everybody wants smile, kiss, hug, and they comfort me. And it was a beautiful, beautiful operation on the second of June. And Mariana came down and she went to everybody in the wheelchair like she normally does. And she came over to Darren. She said, oh, you're still here. You're still here, she said. Darren is 24 years of age now. Since he was 13, he was in the wheelchair. Mother of him was bringing him always, every second of each month. And I was always kissing him, hugging him, especially mother of him. It was touching me very much how faith she was have. And uh, Blessed Mary, so this, and she asked her son for them. Wasn't aware of anything until I got home. Darren just pulled his hand away, took the wheelchair, and said, the two, the two arms, and start walking up my lane. 
I want to say to the people that I'm nobody. It's Jesus who doing miracles. You don't need visionary. You need only that your heart is open, clean and open. Praise to Jesus and Mary. Mary and Jesus. The wheelchairs, I'm in Medjugorje now, and the wheelchairs are home in Ireland. And thanks for all the gifts and the blessings that he has given. Darren and I, he's given us many, many blessings, hasn't he, Darren? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he has. It's so hot, and you are down of the sun. They can be on the beach. We actually found shade. <laughs> we found shade. This has never happened before. But they are here, and they're praying, they're joking, they're singing, they're going to the Parisian hill, they're founding new friends, and they are happy. The work of Mary's Meals is a very simple thing. Our vision is that every child in the world should be able to at least eat one meal every day in school. It's very special for me to come back here to where this work was born. Back in 1983, when I was only 15 years of age, my older sister read an article that there were apparitions in Yugoslavia, as it was then, and we just decided to come, a bunch of teenagers. That visit here led us to want to try and put God at the centre of our lives. So I had this real connection to Medjugorje, so when the war happened and when there was this huge need here, I felt called to come and try and do one small thing to help. The decade of wars that followed was of unprecedented brutality. Bosnia and Herzegovina, it was there that the tragedies were the bloodiest. Mangus went down to the pub one night with his brother Fergus and they were having a pint and they came back and they said, we've got an idea. We'll give up our Christmas holidays and we'd like to take aid out to Medjugorje. Medicines, blankets, food, everything. So it was this mountain of food and clothing it was by then pouring into our home in Scotland. I was just overwhelmed by people's kindness. And, and in some ways that's kind of the story of our work ever since, you know, just constantly being overwhelmed by people's kindness. That was the beginning of Mary's Meals. Scottish International Relief it was called at that time. When we meet Jesus, we also find often he challenges us. He challenged the disciples to feed that crowd of people. They thought it was impossible. I think all of us involved in Mary's Meals feel like that. Individually, we only can do small things, but when we put them together, it is creating something that perhaps seems impossible. My first time I'm content is the school. The second time I'm content is the food that I have to eat every day. I'm not going to be able to eat every day. I'm going to go to the school every morning. Ça, c'est une bagaille qui motive la communauté à plus parce que tout le monde met ensemble. We are now feeding over 1 million children every school day. It doesn't matter how big that number gets, it keeps growing. It's about individual children. It's not a small thing that we do this in Our Lady's name. I just want to thank Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, who brought up a child in poverty, who knew what it was to be exiled, uh, to thank her for her uh, inspiration and, and love. Regardless of our beliefs and the different faiths that are involved in the Mary's Meals family, who could be a better patron for this work? There's always part of me that feels more at home in Medjugorje than anywhere else I've ever been. Here in Medjugorje, Blessed Mary giving us messages and she telling us to be apostles of love. Mary Smeal is apostles of love. And you can change people, not give them only to eat. You can give them love of Mother, love of God, love of Jesus. 
Everywhere I go in the world, I meet people who are doing amazing things because of what God's done with them here in, in Medjugorje. It's amazing to, to see it. Like yeah. Holy Father said, uh, John Paul II, he said this is hope for all the world. I know she wants to keep it low-key, but Ellie did it barefoot. She did it right at the beginning. She's like, I feel like I really want to do this barefoot. I just didn't feel strong enough to do it. But I said in my mind, it's like, if there's anything that I can at least do, it's do everything I can to help her. And I just held a flashlight in front of her so, so she could see where she was stepping, make sure she had some free hands to climb things. Our final destination today on the top of the cross hill is Holy Mass. Remember, there is no Eucharist without our priests. We have seminarians with us as well, so we'll pray for their vocation. Praying through the stations, climbing and being with the group, I really have never felt that much peace. This is beginning of the steepest part. It was beginning of the physically most painful part for Jesus as well, hanging on the cross. That is the reason why here, I always pray with pilgrims for the hardest intention that we can imagine. What did Jesus say on the cross? Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So let us do the same. Let us pray for our enemies in a special way here. Carry the weight of each other. Carry the weight of another. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. I really like how it, it gets harder as the stations goes on, as Jesus is suffering, as he's carrying his cross, you really feel like, gosh, you know, I mean, obviously it's not near the same amount, but you feel like if this is already kind of a struggle for me, you can only imagine. It's an experience for sure. I got a chance to assist my sister because the mountain is so tall. The journey from down to up looked for her so long. It's really hard. It's definitely a sacrifice. Jesus suffers so much more than I am. When we climbed Cross Mountain, like I felt so awesome doing that. Like that was really amazing to me, like praying the rosary, even though maybe I'm not sure quite yet, like on the meaning of that, like it gave meaning to me. Right at the second of the Mass and everything was starting, the sun started coming up. And you saw the sun starting to rise with the cross. And it was just, it was, it was beautiful. That was an amazing experience. I got to pray with you guys and I got to like learn all the kinds of things that you guys believe in. It's beautiful, it honestly is. It's like things that I think that have never been like laid out for me as well as it is here. It showed me so many things that I've never seen before. The adversities that I've, I've had to deal with in the past, um, the only way I can overcome them in the future is with hard work and with God and uh, prayer. You know, that's what I've learned since I've been here. I've just been taught this my whole life, and I've just believed it because you know my parents have told me, like my teachers have told me, priests have told me, but like nothing's really happened for me to make me feel it in my heart, and like now I have. It, it gives me hope. It honestly does. I mean, I. Where I was at, I mean, it's kind of hard for me to admit this sometimes, but I was suicidal. Before you you get into those feelings, you know, you, you have to ask yourself sometimes, like, who, who cares about me, you know? Who really cares? And it's like, you know, I'll, I'll always have these people in the back of my mind. I mean, it's, it's not like I'm gonna go home and forget about this. That's not very likely to happen at all. I'm not just here by myself trying to find my mission. I'm here with a bunch of people who still don't really know where they're going in their life, but they have faith, and I have that as well and it strengthens it. I am completely at peace here. It's gonna be really awesome to like look back and like at times I'm doubting and stuff, I'll be like, that happened to me, like I know it did, I know that happened here. That's not something I'm making up. Carry the, weight of your name. the most peaceful, serene, amazing, powerful, and influential place I've ever been to in my life. I don't know, I just feel like I'm ho like home, I guess, and that just like came out. I don't know, it's just, I feel like it's absolutely incredible. Like, it is just 
the most, and how you said it, you feel at peace, like, I really do. We all, you know, might not agree or, you know, come from the same background, uh, faith-wise or religion-wise, but we've, we've all uh, came together pretty much like a family since we've been here. This is nice. <laughs> is this just like where the locals come from? <laughs> yes, this is a local spot. It's so cool. Everyone so close. We act like we were one big family, even though we've only known each other for a week. Uh, the trip itself has been amazing. We've been through, I think, two all-nighters in two weeks, which I haven't done that in my college career. I've just never felt his presence so much. There was nothing like that overwhelming peace. All my life, all my life. They're wonderful people. I hope I can keep in contact with them in the future. I don't know, I wasn't sure about like going to all the youth festival stuff and the heat and there was another closing ceremony and we were tired and hungry, but it was so much fun and we just got to dance and all the joy and excitement of the week just got to explode into this big dance party. And getting to dance with all these people that are some of my new best friends it was so fun. It's a bit like that. There are many, many deer, and they come right down here in the autumn, in October, which is the mating season. You can actually draw them in if you get a roar towards them. My dad was a, a deer stalker, a deer hunter, so I spent a lot of my youth with, with him outside. I had an experience which I personally convinced me of the existence of God. In no way could I say, could God not exist? Before I went to Medjugorje on that pilgrimage, I had actually made a petition to, to ask Our Lady to lead me closer to Jesus. When I was in Medjugorje, with so much going on, I had completely forgotten about it. But God hadn't. <laughs> People have to have that width of mind to be able to believe it and accept that, yes, we don't know everything. Things can be possible. And maybe because I'm absolutely heaving with Celtic blood. <laughs> and the Celtic race have always had a great ability to be able to believe in what many modern people find totally impossible to believe. I had experienced that wonderful grace of going to Medjugorje as a young person and that really strengthened my, my faith. But I think as my teenage years went on, I, I kind of started living two lives so there was a part where I would still say my rosary every day and try to fast and those things and then the other part of it was going and getting drunk in the pub with my mates and never speaking about my faith with with them so it was almost like two different lives and and I, and I think that's partly why maybe there was that restlessness in me at that stage because it wasn't a life that gave me peace and I suppose looking back on it now God wanted me not just a little bit of of me. The time when I was here before, I, I desperately needed a break from what I, what I was doing in cities. Being here was kind of um, almost a culture shock and I, I had to sit and think like, you know, this is my culture, you know, that was, that was where I came from. I went to Catholic school when I was younger. I had never seen so many young, faithful Catholic people in one place at one time. It's been about three years since I've been back here. I came back here with my mom. It's good for me to be able to spend time with her and see what truly makes her happy. It's hard sometimes to be honest with my mom about my beliefs, but we truly love each other. Sometimes, you know, I wish I could have faith like other people do, and I don't necessarily just mean in God or in religion. 
but I've always kind of been told that, you know, you can't approach things with a closed heart or a closed mind. And I try to open my heart and try to open my mind, but um, I, I don't know, I, st I still have my doubts. If there is a God, that it, it might be beyond my understanding. I've obviously been raised Catholic, seen the Stations of the Cross before, but on Cross Mountain, I had a, a lot different an appeal to it, where it was like you're walking uphill, and I don't know if it's intentional that the mountain gets more rigorous as you go up it. It almost seems like it does, because you know people are starting to get tired, the rocks become more jagged. One thing I've always respected is people who sacrifice things even if it's something as small as taking your shoes off and walking on rocks. There was a part when we were on Cross Mountain where Mickey was saying, you need to love your enemies. And I just had this vision of like every single person's face who I felt had ever wronged me. And I had to think like, was it really that bad? Forgiveness is a huge emotional tool for people. Like if you can actually learn to forgive someone, you're gonna have an easier life. Resentment is like letting somebody else take up room in your head. Whereas like they have wronged you, but you holding on to that grudge is only gonna hurt yourself. It's only gonna make you bitter. When I first came here, I was like, dude, do I deserve to be here? I don't wanna say like something like this is wasted on me because I don't feel that way. I got mail from Rome and I was like, what, what is this? Like, who, who do I know in Rome? Well, I still talk to Roberto. I told him that I would like to see him be the first African Pope. He's gonna do great things, whatever he does. My pilgrimage to Vijogo did not leave me the same. I had just completed my second year of theology. Madison sent me a message and she was telling me, I will have to attend your ordination. Then I told her, Madison, no, you have to wait. She kept telling me, I have to come, I have to come. Then the good news arrived. I'm in Rome. We're going to see Roberto's ordination. Our first time to come to Rome. <laughs> I'm sorry that I bothered you so much about it. She's attending my, my, my donation and at the same time she's making a pilgrimage to Rome. The Medjugorje trip for me, the experience is just, it's indescribable. The, the closest thing I could say to how I felt was an overwhelming amount of joy. I pray for you all the time, all of you are in my prayers. I'm really proud of you. There's a lot of doubt out there, whether people believe or not. There's always doubt. Being in Medjugorje, I learned that I had to put my trust and my faith in God. The ordination mass will be in the St. Peter's Basilica. When you ordain the deacon, you are one step to the priestly ordinations. Deacon mean service. That's my special prayer that the Lord can make me an instrument of service to all the people, whoever will come, whoever will, I will meet. Whatever God calls me to do, I'm open to it. Second, Robert Daluganda. After now, I never knew that I will be here. I never knew that I will be to Rome. I never knew that I will be ordained a deacon. Then. It's just a service to the Lord, a service to the people. My parish was founded in 1970, my parish in Uganda. I'm the first deacon from that parish, and you can imagine how the celebration in my parish is. They're so glad that God has answered their prayers. They have got a deacon 
I would like to thank my friends who have accompanied me in this journey. We have strengthened me when I was feeling difficulties in this journey. I thank the Lord for this gift. Amen. Amen, Father Yanga. <laughs> Next year, we'll be celebrating becoming priests. Thank you very much. I'm planning to go to America, but I have to ask my, my, my bishop, and then I have to ask my rector. I haven't got the response. I haven't got the visa. I lost hope, but Mother Mary, if it's your will that I have to go, I will go. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna like wanna jump over the rails. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Are you serious? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we got your first time. We made it. I didn't expect it. You did. Yes, we wanted to surprise you. Then I knelt down and I said, oh my goodness. Thank you, Mother Mary. I've made it. Is that your first time in uh, the United States? First time. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Hi. It's so good to see you. I cannot believe I'm looking at your face right now. <laughs> it's been I know. so beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it? We're back together. <laughs> Even if we are not seeing each other for the last three years, but when we met, it was like you are meeting your real brother. When you experience something like that, like a life-changing experience, something new altogether, I don't think you could ever lose that connection with them. As soon as we were back together, we reestablished it like that. Cool. If I didn't go to Magicoria, I don't know where I would be. My struggles have honestly helped me grow so much in my faith because I've relied on God. This is like what peace feels like. This is what like love feels like. And I felt like that's what I felt when I was there. It was just like so much love in my heart. And knowing that that comes from God completely changed my life. When I talked to Emily, she's so like validated in her faith. There was something that like happened in her that I think was so amazing that I've seen. And I haven't changed the way she has. Like, I mean, she's completely shifted. Before, I think that I was really hard headed. I was like, no, no I don't think so. No, nope, that's not for me. The way I see it now, like I don't know everything. Chris, why are you walking like that? So I don't get sand. I gotta waddle all over. I'm in college, just finished my first year in like all straight A's. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. It's the little things you do in life. Every day I try to like be like a better person. And like I fall short, you know. I'm not perfect by any means, but from where I came from and how I've changed, I just want to keep on trying to be a better person. This is a huge surprise and I love it. It's yeah. awesome. I'm so happy to see you guys. Even from someone like me who didn't necessarily believe in anything, um, you know, I, that plays showed me that miracles do happen and they can happen and I think they are very likely. Literally did change my life and I just feel like my heart is just like in a good place. Like I'm so happy. Here it did feel like I was starting fresh, but I knew that my personal relationship with God is definitely better. My faith continues to grow, it continues to be a work in progress. You have to continue and continue working in your relationship with God. Having my brothers and sisters that I, they come, then I give Holy Communion to them. It's one of the things that I like most that is so special for me. Ninety days ago, I was ordained in Rome, two from the same family, two from the same group, and we are experiencing two special events. Seeing Ellie was great. It's almost like she didn't change at all for me. When we met Ellie, she had just started dating Joseph. She was talking about him, and she's like, I really like him. Like, we, we've been friends, and we're finally dating. <laughs> What is our calling in this world? What is our purpose? What is our vocation? Everyone is called differently. Everyone will choose his or our own way. We are praying for each one of us. Now he brings two people together with very powerful God-given gifts to unite and become one. I've never been to an actual Catholic wedding where mass was included or anything like that. It was uh, definitely the most beautiful wedding I've been a part of. Not that we came just to, to see Ellie's getting married, no. It was a prayer that we promised to her that every day we will continue to sustain her with our prayers. I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Fitzgerald.
they knew that there was a plan for them. They prayed and they both ended up where they were supposed to be and like that was the bigger picture. May God bless Joseph Finelli with this love for all eternity. We've been having so much fun together. They just really feel like I've had them as my best friends for as long as I've lived. Because three years ago we met, we are strangers. But God's providence brought us together. We ended up becoming brothers and sisters, forming a family. The good Lord has been good to me. He has loved me so much. Yesterday I was ordained. Now today we are here, we have celebrated the gift of priesthood. The most important miracles in Medjugorje are millions of hearts being changed. Some call this place the School of Love, where they encounter the Mother of Love. I want to say to the youth, I tell it to them with all my heart, because I really know, Blessed Mary loves them. And when they think that they are alone, they must know that they are not alone. They have one mother who is always next to them. It's enough that they open in heart and ask help, because she will give them everything. She will give them Jesus. Jesus is light. Jesus is love. Jesus is peace. And I want that young people have Jesus. And I'm praying for this. 2,023 years ago, he was born into this world. Through Mary came life. He suffered for us on the cross. It's the cross that unites us with him. Don't be afraid. Stay up, cause I need to give you everything you want. Even if it's tearing me apart, I'll keep on giving out these pieces of mine. Yeah. If you're drifting, you can drive me through the night. Like it's my job to always be there in a crisis. If you need me, I'll be hanging on the line. You're running blind, but so am I. Can't help that I'm stretching now my soul. Cause I hate to keep you waiting. Itching now the stone. And I'll keep breaking into fragments. We pass them off like they were made of magic. We'll keep on acting like it never happened So play it off like I always practice So if you know me then you have one We'll deal with disappointment like a passion But now I'm making up for every absence We're back and forth, I'm fighting with my habits And losing traction, so I keep breaking into fragments I 
I stay up Cause I'm thinking about everything I'm not And I'm waiting till the world is giving up on me Laying it just buried in my thoughts Ask me and I'll tell you that I'm fine Cause I'd hate for you to see what's on my mind Don't want to bring you down like I bring down myself Won't ask for help Cause who would care to know that I'm stretching now Now, I send you my blessing, Nure, ordained the blessing. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you all.